New wedge in its rawest form. At least that's what they're saying. Let's review a wedge. Welcome back to the McFitting Room. Jim McClear here on the McGolf channel where we discuss golf clubs, golf fitting, golf repairs, all so that your scores can go low. And this isn't going to be any different. Callaway has released its new Jaws Raw. All right, Jaws Raw. Now, the predecessor was the Jaws MD5. And in between those two releases, they had the Jaws full toe with the raw face. So this is a culmination of what would, would logically seem to be the combination of the Jaws raw or Jaws full toe along with the Jaws MD5. Now, why is that? Well, uh, the Jaws full toe is a is a kind of a pred is the second generation of what was the high toe models that you see out there except for all the lines run across the face and it had a raw face with the the very aggressive groove patterns that Callaway has designed with Mr. Cleveland <laughs> The it Jaws MD5 was more, we'll call it a toned down maneuver model, a toned down model of the of, of their normal wedge. It didn't have the high toe. You had the, the heel and the toe area were clean. They didn't have the grooves on it. And they had a grooving pattern in it that changed as loft went. And then the grooves in between the grooves were cut in a different fashion. Now what we have is the Jaws Raw, and this is the backside. The Jaws Raw. Now, let's, before we get started on most of the things, you're gonna notice a couple of things. See how those are darker than those are lighter? Those are two different kinds of weights. The weights in the toe are tungsten, where the other ones are not. Tungsten is significantly heavier, heavier in their weights that these guys use in order to give it a particular feel. Now, why would they do that? Well, if you look, if you look at again on that, there's a pad right here. And this is a pad that's extra. If you can look, it, it should stick out just ever so slightly right there. All right, and so what you have is a competition. This is a little weight here. So you put a little weight here so that you can get that launch characteristic that Mr. Cleveland was looking for in a wedge. Basically not something that shoots it super duper in a into the air, something that's a little more controlled and gives the grooves a chance to bite. Okay, that's kind of the, the easiest way to describe that. And, and for those guys that tend to flip the wedge, it'll slow down the toes so you don't overcook it. That's just waiting 101 stuff. Now the, the raw face, if you can, the raw face is, you can see where it's cleaner, see? You're cleaner here, you're cleaner here, and it's raw in the middle. Now, the, the raw face will get dirty, it will change color, because it's raw, right? I'm not gonna go with that. Nobody's, nobody at Callaway said, oh, it's gonna rust and give you more spin. Nobody's saying that. What they're saying is, is that their grooves are, their most aggressive grooves in golf. And what does that mean? Well, there's a groove that everybody sees, it's that line. And the shape, the width, the depth, the edges, all that stuff are controlled in the USGA. And if you maximize that, you can make it the most aggressive, okay? And really it's not the groove that makes the spin, it's the edge of that groove that makes the spin and all the edges of the coarseness that makes that spin. The other part is, is the, the the spacing between the grooves, or and they like to say the grooves in between the grooves. Okay, what does that mean? Well, in between the grooves, there's that face that everybody sees, and you see, and it looks like milling, and because it is, the the milling is sharper, and they're cut, right? Uh, 
when they're, they're cut at an angle so that when you open it up, the grooves are more like facing your target so that you get this more of a groove feel going that direction. And what that, what those grooves or those cuts, I think that's probably a little more uh, appropriate. The, the cuts are sharp and those, and that sharpness creates a coarseness and that's what grabs the golf ball in order to create this spin. Now, can they go, can they make things sharper or whatever? Yeah, I mean, it can tear up the ball and then nobody wants that. So what they've done here is they've con uh, consciously decided to give you these grooves that really grab the ball, create this kind of, you know, high flight, but not super high and not like a, a bullet in, in flight in order for you to in order for you, in order for you to stop, have that stopping power on the green. All right. So there's the that that's the grooves. All right. So an, another thing to consider is uh, the grinds. Everybody, want, when we talk about wedges, we talk about grinds. <laughs> Callaway is going to have four grinds. They're going to have your standard grind, which is what I've got right here. You're going to have a W grind. You're going to have an X grind, and you're going to have a Z grind. All right. Now the first three should sound pretty familiar. The S, the S grind is standard. Uh, the W grind means it's a wider sole with a little bit more radius. The uh, X grind was a a lot of bounce, a lot of heel and toe removal. And now you have the Z grind. And the Z grind is basically the cousin to the X grind with lower bounce. Okay. So what does that mean? All right, let's start with the let's start with the S grind. And I, I'm using a 60 because it's way more apparent with a 60 than it is the than the other one. If you look at the if you look at the S, and the S has a there it is. See that lower changes color right there? All right, that, that's the leading edge and it's not killed per se, but it's chamfered so that it doesn't grab the dirt. So you don't have a shovel. And that'll be true on all the grinds. All right, that's what they've done. <clears throat> instead, of, instead of killing the leading edge and that's basically rounding the edge, instead of doing that, they've decided to chamfer it a little bit and give it a little bit of a straighter look right here and not so much curved right there. All right, that's the idea. So if you look at it, you can see that's pretty straight. That's a pretty straight laying edge, it's not so much curved. And when you do that, you've got to give a, you got to carve a little bit of that leading edge out so it just won't grab the dirt and all of a sudden you're, you're, you're taking these, you know, truck size divots in order to make it go. Now, so what's the standard grind? What do they all do? Well, the standard grind is exactly what it is, and we'll use a different wedge now. All right, on a 10 degree, or on, sorry, on a 10 degree bounce. All right, so there you go. On a 10 degree bounce, it has just enough of that leading edge that's been taken off of, and just the ever so slight hint of trailing edge removal. Has a radius on the sole, and that's going to be for the majority of the players in the majority of conditions. Now, we're going to talk about fitting stuff here in a little bit, but these are just the characteristics. Now, I have a W grind. All right, a W grind is basically a wide sole. And if you look at that, it, from front to back, it is very, very wide. And again, it has the leading edge has been chamfered out. And this one's just basically a wide sole. And that's what it's for. Now this comes in a 12 degrees of bounce. So this is going to be something that you might find in very lush conditions or somebody that takes a, a pretty steep angle to the attack. Now the other two are the X and the Z. The X and the Z will both have uh, what I would call, a, hmm, I'll call extra heel and toe removal. The idea is to be able to slightly, you know, to 
they, they'll tell you so you can open the face and make this happen. And, and that's part of it. What I would tend to tell you is that if you're in a lot of conditions where you have moguls or lots of up and downs, the added removal of the toe and the added removal of the heel allow you to take those clubs and when you're at angles like this or you're at angles like that, that the, the, the toe and the heel areas just don't get in the way. Now, can you open it up? Yeah, yeah, you can open it up. The, the X is gonna have a lot more bounce, right? And that's for the guy that's gonna come in steeper, where the Z is gonna be a little bit, or is gonna have the low bounce for the guy that comes in a little shallow. And that's the, and there's gonna be the difference. The last part of it is, is that they're all going to be, they're all gonna come with the dynamic gold spinner shafts as far as steel, and there will be a graphite option, and it's a Catalyst 80, I believe. They'll all come with the uh, UTX non-corded, and the apparently gray is the, is the choice of color this time around, because you've seen where they've had red and green and blue. This time it's going to be gray. And so, there, so you have these family of shafts. Now, or I'm sorry, family of grinds. Now, they're not all going to be equal as far as the offerings concern because they have different applications. It is definitely, oh, what was you, can you say? That you can start off with a, an S grind at the, we'll call it the, the, the weaker loss, the, the 52s, the 54s, 56s, depending on the conditions and whatnot, and go into a different grind as the lofts get more because of the way that you might use that particular club. So you, that's where you would go with that. So you got to keep that in mind when you, when you go to pick these kinds of wedges out. Okay. So the next question is, does it spin? And we need to go answer that question. All right. So what we've got here is, uh, I've got a standard 5610 um, Jaws Raw. And I'm going to be using some Callaway Chrome Softs. Why not? It's a Callaway. And we're going to just try and chip and see what happens when we do this. Now, to keep in mind, I've been playing the full toes, and I'm totally happy with the way the full toes work. Uh, I've been getting the ball up in the air. I've been stopping. I've been doing a lot of things I've been wanting to do with it. And so the, the feel of these things, when you have a raw finish, personally, I believe it gives it a little softer feel. Now, you're going to see these things. They're going to change color. I've had a few guys call me with some concerns. Oh, is it supposed to do this? The answer is yes, it's supposed to do that. Now, I don't want it to get all rusty and crappy and stuff like that, but it will, get, it will turn darker, as I've seen with mine do, and I play a lot in the dew. Uh, they will turn darker, uh, but where the hitting area will tend to stay cleaner, if that makes any sense. All right, so we're going to hit a variety of shots. Right now, I've got it listed under half shots. But we're just going to take a few shots and uh, see what happens. There we go. Okay, so when you sit up to the ball, the first thing I notice is because we talked about is the straight leading edge. When you can set it down, you'll see some folks that really want to push it into the ground. That uh, might be contrary to what they like, but it also allows you to do a very, very cool alignment with it, I think. And, uh, but it sits down behind the ball, and then the, the chromed out area where the, the raw is not uh, gives you a, a, a way to frame the golf ball. Couple more here. So what I did is I took a little different angle at it. So I've been running around 6,000 with the just coming down on it pretty hard. I get, came in a little steeper, gave it a little bit more oomph, and ran it right up to about 8,000 RPM. So that uh, that's some good, pretty decent stopping power. Eight thousand again, very uh, is very very consistent, which is one of the things that Mr. Cleveland was talking about being very very consistent, and it is. It's running around for me right around eight thousand RPM, 
which is about what I get from all my other wedges. So I'm not going to be that guy that pulls the ball back because I'm not a, I don't attack the ball at a steep angle. Now we're going to try a few shots that are, uh, are like quarter swings, that kind of thing. See what happens there. Well, I keep on it like that, I might <laughs> have to figure you do this a little bit more often. There we go. Yep. So again, I'm right around that 60, 60 to 62, actually 61 to 62, and right around 5,000 RPM. And there it is again. So three in a row with those particular shots. Again, the consistency is there. That's what I'm really kind of harping on. Because every one of us, when we go to play, we're going to be in different conditions, different swing types, that kind of thing. And the, the reality of it is, once you get fit to the right you know, grind, length, lie, all that stuff, then what you're looking for is a reliable wedge. So far, this is showing it can do that. All right, last, uh, I got three more here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take one, one or two in a full swing and then I'm going to lay one open and let's just see what happens. That wasn't very good. I just dug the crap out of that. Because I normally don't full swing a wedge, so this is not what I'm looking for. There we go. 100 yard wedge, 9,000 RPMs. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can open one up and get it really to go up in the air. There we go. Let's try that one again. That was actually kind of fun. There we go. Open it up, 50 yard shot, almost 9,000 RPM, which is kind of what you expect when you're doing something like this. There we go, that's what's happening. All right, and you can see where I'm on the different parts of the faces for the different types of shot, but very consistent. I'm really, uh, it's very consistent. I'm really kind of surprised. Now, the feel from it is, just like on the full toe, is very soft. And that is, so you can feel the, the golf ball interacting with the, with the golf club. And that's really what we're looking for here, right? That's the uh, nice feel. Now, the, uh, the UTX grip is a, you know, it's not super sticky. The pattern on it will allow you to uh, still have control of it. And the, uh, the tour, the spinner, I believe, is a 115. So we, you know, standard wedge stuff. <laughs> I dug that, I missed that to 80 and still had 9,000 RPM. That ought to be enough. Let's talk about fitting. Well, just real quick testing, that's not the cure-all end-all to be sure. <laughs> but the, it does give you kind of an idea because it's real numbers indoors on a mat that's fairly consistent in the way you get into it. And yes, I dug a few, but the landing area is not too bad. All right, a little left to right. Everything I'm within a yard of the hole. Left to right. I got the flight that I like. I'm not a, that guy. I, it, it's doing, basically the club did, just did exactly what it was advertised to do. So I wouldn't be well, I wouldn't be avert to having it. I like mine the way they are. I'm used to where they're gaming. I don't think I'm going to change, but I could play them. Let's put it that way. They have a very, very comparable feel to one another between the full toe and the raw face. The, the feel coming off of them is there. And it's completely solid. I mean solid. All right, so from a fitting perspective, who, this is where we get into the who would I recommend this for, right? The four grinds, right? We're going to go with the four grinds. Number one, when you go and do wedges, uh, wedges typically get overlooked as far as uh, the length of it and the 
the lie angles, and all these other things. And lie angle for a wedge is paramount. You know, if you find yourself and you're healing it and you can't control it or your shots feel pretty bad, there, one of the things could be lie angle, okay? The other part is maybe the club is too long or too short, and those lie angles are bad for that particular length, all right? So go get tested for it. Test for the lie angles, test for the lie angles, test for the length, and get the right setup so that you're making a consistent setup to the ball in order for you to make good wedge shots. That's number one. Number two, number two, it would be into the grinds. Now the grinds are, the S grind is gonna be what they're gonna tell you is for basically the, the largest, you know, over the, or under the, uh, the bell curve, that's gonna be right in here in the bell curve, the largest portion of them. Those are the guys that average going to the ball, playing decent golf courses, that kind of stuff. Maybe, you know, the, well, average golfer. And what it is, you have all the soles are have a, have a modicum of radius, but in this one, this one, the S does. It has that killed leading edge, and is very utilitarian, and it will be available in most or the most loft angles, right? The most lofts from the very shallow to the very uh, very weak or the very you know the 60 plus, all right. Now the W grind, the W grind is a high bounce wide sole. That's for the guy that is coming in steep, I mean up and down, plays in stuff that's pretty thick, right? Uh, sand that is fluffy, those kinds of things. And also, it would be in my opinion, the guy that's not gonna be very artistic. And I talk about this before, you're either point, click, and chip, or you're an artiste. And the point, click, and chip is the guy that sits down the wedge, swings it, he's not moving, he's not opening the blade very much, or she for that matter is not opening the blade very much, and it's just there, it's a tool, pop it up, make it go, there you are. The W grind is excellent for that. The S grind can do very well for that as well. Now, let's say you play in hard pan, right? You're in hard pan, which is uh, very, very hard uh, surfaces. The, the sand is not very fluffy, it's very hard. Everything's cut very, very close, those very tight conditions then you would want to look at the Z grind, all right? The Z grind is a very low bounce option and it has that, the, the heel and toe relief that's been removed. You can open it up if necessary in order to get a little bit more loft, get a little bit more bite in order to get underneath that. But you gotta be very careful because that low bounce in that tight conditions is the, what's helping you do that. You take that into a thick condition and you could very well just miss the ball completely. So you gotta watch out for that, which takes me to the X-Grind. The X-Grind is its uh, high bounce cousin. Same kind of a look, but just has more bounce. And for just the opposite, what we've been talking about, the nice lush conditions, very thick, very fluffy, and you wanna be the artiste, the guy that's gonna open and, and do that kind of stuff. Now, the other thing is that you might look at is if you have, uh, I told you before, is that if you have a lot of ups and downs, on your golf course, mountainy area, a lot of moguls, that kind of thing, then you may want to consider the, the X or the Z based on the other conditions that we talked about in order for the heel to ride along the turf and not get stuck. If you don't understand with all that, if you're not really, you know, you're like, ah, whatever, then the S grind, just go with the S grind as it is. Now, as far as shafts go, the, the tour issue that comes in here is basically a true temper spinner is what they're calling it and it's a fine wedge shaft, right? It is a true to life, no kidding, wedge shaft. And if I know Mr. Cleveland, and I don't know him that well, but I have talked to him, it's probably, <laughs> it's probably an eight iron tripped up pretty good to give you all the characteristics of what a spinner would be. And more's the better for us, right? And that's what we like. The other option is a graphite shaft, which has been needed for a long, long time. The Catalyst 80 is a, wet, is a specific wedge shaft it's just lighter weight, gives you the kick, gives you a good feel for those folks that aren't using super heavy stuff. I recommend those quite a bit for those going into graphite options. Why not have a graphite wedge shaft, right? Why not? And finally, you have the UTX grip, which is a standard. Again, those get the grip fit so that it fits in your hand so that you don't feel like you're grabbing a noodle or it's not too big. Get something with the texture that you like that promotes a lot of confidence. When you get all these together, you make a more confident swing, 
the ball gets up in the air, it goes where you want, it stops how you like it, the scores go low, everything's wonderful in the life of golf. So there's the wedge. I think the wedge is, is very, very nice. The, the addition of the tungsten weights in the back, the, the chamfered in the front to kill the leading edge so in a different way so it doesn't get stuck, the four different bounces that they have, the varying loft angles that you can get, a nice shaft that goes in there to work, the raw face. The raw face just grabs and it grabs and it grabs, and I think that's uh, excellent, right? We, that's an excellent thing that's going on with that. So with the, with the varying groove widths, the, varying, the, the way that the, the space in between the grooves is cut, it just, this, there's no wonder why this is a very popular wedge on tour. So if you got any questions, put them in the show notes below. Uh, go to your local Callaway person. If not, send me an email and, and check them out just so you can see that you did them. So you take a few shots and see what you think. And I'm sure you will not be disappointed. And as always, guys, let's see your scores. Go low.